Welcome back, everybody. It's another episode of The Human Side of Marketing. I'm your co-host, Chris Angel, and I'm here with your host, Kurt Stockwell. Good afternoon, hey, Chris. Kurt. Hello, hello. Good afternoon. Good to see you online. Yes, thank you. Yes, good. <laughs> it's great to be with you. Digitally. Yes, digitally. <laughs> yeah, I like it. Well, last time we had a, I, that was my favorite episode last time. Maybe you'll top, top it today. I don't know, but mm, maybe um, we did an episode a while back called like how humans read your website. That's right. Because it's, you know, at the end of the day, those are the people that actually buy from you, not search and not search engine bots. But, right. um, but today we actually get to take that a little step further, right? Like we get to go through the, the rest of the homepage and what should be on it. Right. Exactly. So we're talking about the homepage. So from yeah. top to bottom, yeah. this is now, this isn't the, the 10 commandments or the constitution. This is just some tips. Okay. Um, okay. And the homepage of your website, I'm convinced is, is the most critical page on your site because that's the page that people are going to see first, duh, obviously. And that's usually the one that people click off of immediately when they're like, I don't know what this is. I'm confused. I'm going to go look at the yeah. competition. Okay. So yeah. this is a way to make sure you've got good juicy stuff from top to bottom on your website. Mm. So people will engage and you'll get more conversions. Okay. All right. Yeah. Take, take me to it. I can't take wait. you to it. Okay. So we talked a little bit, um, a couple episodes ago, maybe like four or five episodes ago about the, how humans read your website. And that was all about above the fold. Now the fold uh, comes from newspaper days. It was the fold of the newspaper. So all of those juicy headlines were above the fold. Mm -hmm. But in this case, this is the fold of your laptop. So a mm -hmm. quick review mm -hmm. above the fold. So we talked about that last time. This is going to kind of go down below the fold all the way to the footer of your website and things that you need to consider about what to have on your website on the homepage. So we're going to start with the header. Okay. okay, so this will be a little bit of review if you've listened to how humans read your website, but it's okay. always good to review a little bit, especially if you haven't done it yet. If you haven't done it yet, right. then this is a, you're right. being scolded today. Uh, ha, ha. Tough <laughs> okay. love, tough love. That's right, it's tough yeah. love today. Okay, so the header. So what are, are you communicating what you offer? Now, many times people land on the header or the, the first thing that they, that they see when they land on a website mm -hmm. doesn't ever clearly explain what the business does. Mm -hmm. We've all seen it where it has some sort of, cryptic, um, clever message, but it doesn't really clearly explain. If you go to our website, it literally says, we build beautiful, usable websites. That's the first thing that you see, big, bold letters. Hmm. And I would encourage you, don't worry about being clever with that very first thing that people see, because they need to clearly understand what you do. Hmm. So if you are a refrigeration company, we just built a website for a refrigeration company in town, you know, uh, commercial refrigeration services, boom, big, hmm. right? You don't have, many times people feel like they need to be really clever and really um, like um, kind of grandiose in that first thing that people see. Mm -hmm. And they forget that people don't really necessarily know who you are yet. Okay. So don't go into that. Um, don't go into that kind of grandiose statement yet. Now, um, is it clear uh, how your product or service is making your customer's life better? So this is where you could put a little bit of text underneath that initial Mm -hmm. uh, one line of like what your business is. So for us, for example, I'm just going to give you some examples of what we have on our website yeah. and some examples of some other websites that we've done. So for us, we say most websites are a waste of money because they lack clarity and do not convert users into customers. Mm -hmm. When you focus on what matters most to your customers, they'll be compelled to buy your products. That's so good. Yeah. And we, we do that through a website. So really clearly you've seen, we build websites and we're, we're committed to the fact that, Clarity is king and, um, you know, and then the next thing that you should see um, is a really clear call to action and that would be like your buy now button. Mm -hmm. So your buy now button um, doesn't have to say obviously buy now if you're not selling like a, a t-shirt or a widget. So for us, mm -hmm. the next thing that you would see right below that, that main uh, title and sentence is a button that says schedule a free website review. Mm -hmm. That's it. Really simple, really clean, really clear. Uh, and be really descriptive in your in those buttons, quote unquote buttons, because actually Google likes a really uh, well described button. Those algorithms, when they're searching through your website and those bots are crawling through all the content of your website, mm -hmm. they're actually looking at those buttons mm -hmm. as something that's important to pay attention to. And if it just says like buy now, click here, mm -hmm. take the next step, mm -hmm. um, that's not as descriptive as uh, search engines would prefer. So if you have a really clear um, call to action button. Um, with clear text. And it can even be a little bit of a longer um, string of words. It doesn't have to be small and concise. It could be a little bit longer. Make the button nice and big. Think about the fact that mobile 
Mm -hmm. uh, on mobile devices, those buttons need to be nice and big and fat, especially if you know, people are, you're wanting people to take an action. You want it to be really easy to click. Right. 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 Um, and so the, some of the, go ahead. Yeah. I just, good point. I was just thinking about like, sometimes when things like, you know, the little X's when an ad pops up and it's like hard yeah. to hit the, it's hard to hit the X to close it down. I'm like, yeah. ah, I clicked the ad. I didn't mean to do that. Yeah. yeah. Don't make that big main button hard to click. And, and right. always yeah. think about the fact that whatever you're building on your website needs to be simple to use on a mobile device. Mm -hmm. that's, that's something to, to remember these days, you know, 2019, not right, 18, absolutely. 19. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so the, one of the other, a um, couple of the other call to actions that we've done for other clients, we have a, um, built a website for a CrossFit gym mm -hmm. and their main call to action was start with a 14 day trial. Yep. Um, I know one, one that I really like that I use uh, often with clients is talk to a fill in the blank expert. So talk to an insurance expert. Mm -hmm. Talk to a banking expert, talk to a refrigeration expert, mm -hmm. um, you know, so if you can kind of use that as a, or contact a, not contact us, contact a fill in the blank expert. Mm -hmm. um, I like that a lot because it, um, it's a really clear call to action. You know what, you know, you're going to do, you're going to take the next step and whether you're filling out a form or getting right. information right. about a phone call, or maybe there's like an online chat feature. You're expecting to talk to somebody who has answers rather than just like, contact us. Yeah. Right. Yep. Um, it's a little bit more exact. Um, mm -hmm. the next thing that you need to have is what's called a value proposition. And we talked about this again in the, how humans read your website we call these a value stack as well. Right, so right. three or four things your customer will get as a result of engaging with your product. Right. So for us, um, that, uh, that uh, value stack is clarify your message, turn users into customers and restore brand pride. So that, that's ours. Um, we, I mentioned the gym, the gym, we used gain confidence, mm -hmm. get in great shape, change your future. Mm. Yeah, um, there's, there's a, uh, we did a website for a charter bus service here in Spokane, affordable pricing, experienced drivers, reliable vehicles. Wow. Yeah. You know, so you keep it simple. It's really simple. The, literally the, the, the website that we built for the charter bus service says charter bus service. <laughs> at the top of the website. You what? Know, I know, right? Duh. Wait, so, I don't get it. What do you do? Right. So the when we um the website that we uh, the built the, their old website literally didn't say that at all, had a picture of um Spokane. There was no picture of a bus anywhere on that main image. Wow. And it was just like um experience uh, experience the a thrill of your life the thrill of your life or something like something bizarre like that. You're like, is this a roller coaster? Is this a, <laughs> right, right. is this a, um, yeah. am I buying illegal drugs? I mean, what am I, what am I doing here? So, um, <laughs> right, right. the, so the next thing that you need to have, uh, um, after those, those list of values, um, that your customer can expect after engaging with your brand is a plan. Um, is now, this still above the fold or are we below? No, the fold? no we're, we're below the fold now okay. after really kind of after the, call to action, the value proposition can actually sit above the fold or can go start to go below. Okay. The fold. All right. Got it. So now we're starting to kind of head below the fold, right? Okay. Yep. So now give, give your people, your, your users a plan. How does your product work? Mm -hmm. What, uh, what does the customer need to do in order to use the product or gain experience uh, or experience success? Or how do you lead your customer to the promised land? Quote unquote. Mm -hmm. Right. So, and these, you might feel like these are going to be very rudimentary and kind of like a, kind of like a, well, everybody knows that kind of a thing. But it's funny to me um, how often I hear businesses say, well, everybody knows that. And it's, everybody doesn't know that. Right. We just assume people understand what to do next or what, they're, what the experience is going to be. So literally, you can have a one, two, three. Now, there's, there should be some other content in between these sections, but these are kind of real uh, critical main, I guess, um, cornerstones of, of your messaging on your homepage. So right. give the plan. So the plan could be for the charter bus service, for example, the plan was one, get a quote, mm -hmm. two, we provide a custom solution, three, enjoy your trip. Perfect. Wow. Simple. Right? So simple, dude. I feel like what you're breaking down here is like so, so much of mark people get so confused in marketing and they just get all in their head. They put their marketing hat on and everything starts to get cloudy and, and frustrating, confusing, you know, and what's so <laughs> revolutionary about this is it's just so simple. It's like, duh, like, yeah. duh. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's literally, if you can make your marketing more, like 
I heard um, a marketing expert once say, don't say in a paragraph what you can say in a sentence, mm -hmm. right. right? How many emails have we written that we can look back now and go, I should have just said that in a sentence rather than a paragraph, yeah. right? Right. And I mean, I, my staff rolls their eyes from time to time because I definitely get wordy and I'm thinking they're think they're, they, they've tuned out. I could have said this in a sentence rather than a paragraph. <laughs> <laughs> and I read, I'm, honestly, that's what your customers want too. They just want clarity. They want you to tell them uh, what problem you're solving and then just kind of shut up and get out of the way. Yeah. We, so we try so hard to be, uh, to bring value through um, so much description of what right. we think people want to hear, but right. it actually becomes noisy. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah. So um, one thing that you can, one thing that I really like to do too in a website is, is put something on the, the homepage in particular about what is the cost of not doing business with me? Or what is the cost of not doing business with, with, with you? Mm -hmm. um, for us, um, if they don't do business with us, this is kind of what we say. Um, we say, how expensive is your unclear and scattered marketing? How much is your unclear marketing costing you? How many potential customers can't hear your offer in a sea of noise? How many of your events are half empty because people don't know they should come? How many people are passing up your consulting? Can potential customers understand they need your product or service? A lack of clarity may be costing you a great deal of money. Wow. You wow. know? Yeah. And so many times people shy away from a statement like that on their website because they're like, I don't want to be a used car salesman. I don't want to be pushy. But if you've established yourself as an authority that has a really clear message, yep. people understand that you, you get the problem they have and you're there to solve it. They're okay with you being very blunt. Right. You know, now if you said, you know, we're the, we're the best in town, nobody can match us. Uh, you know, we've been crushing our competition for years and that maybe is a little bit too car sales many, right? but, <laughs> but, um, but, you know, I think deep down, most people are very genuine about, how they feel about their product and knowing that it works. And so that. state it, state that, you know, what's the cost of people not doing business with you? Right. Yeah. I love that. If you, if you have uh, the next piece of that, uh, the next, next piece kind of scrolling down is if you have prices, put some prices out there. Hmm. You know, we have actually have some prices on our website. We have like this service starting at that service, starting at this service, starting at. So mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I'd have to navigate over to my website to, to look at it, but um, literally we've got marketing, uh, marketing consulting services, we've got website design services, and we've got hosting services. That's kind of the th three pillars that we, that we, um, that we offer. And, you know, I've got some base pricing in there about what it would cost to kind of get started with us. So one for us, you know, that kind of weeds out the people who uh, maybe don't have the, um, the finances to, you know, have us build them, build them a website. But honestly, you know, I'm not, you're not wasting my time. And more importantly, I'm not wasting your time. Right. And so, I mean, that's, that's re we really kind of feel like that's almost a service. Like this is what we cost. If, if that's not something you can afford, you should go find somebody who, um, right. who you can afford. And, you know, so you're not spinning your wheels and wasting your time. Sometimes people are, are very um, shy about maybe putting their prices out there. I'm not saying it's for everybody. Not everybody should necessarily have their prices out there, sure. but if it brings more clarity, why not? And I like your point about like, it, it, it acts as a filter. Like sometimes people's frustration with technology and the internet is like, oh, internet leads are stupid. Like not, you know, internet leads don't work. People aren't serious. Right. And so use your, use it to filter out the people who aren't serious. Yeah, exactly. I really like exactly. that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so pricing choices, put those out there. Um, and then the, the last thing is the footer. Um, in your footer, mm -hmm. uh, one thing that you can do is put a brief description of your business and be very... Uh, kind of technical about it. Lots of uh, nice juicy keywords because nobody's probably going to read it, but right. search engines like that description in the footer. Okay. Um, that's where you can be a little bit more boring in the description of your company. Sure. Um, another big piece is we call it the junk drawer or kind of important uh, or links or site map or something like that. Yeah. Um, many times you'll see uh, on a website, the main menu at the top of the website is just crammed with page after page, after page, after page, after page, after page, after page. There's like, you know, right. eight or 10 or 12 pages cluttering up and getting in the way of the most important pages. Mm -hmm. So keep the most important links and pages on that main menu in the top of your website. All the other junk, put it down in the bottom in the junk drawer. Got it. Um, so like FAQs, employment opportunities, contact us, blog, social links, about us. Those kind of things can just kind of go down in the yeah. footer 
people know to look there and it's not yeah. cluttering up the yeah. important links at the top of your page where you want people to engage with your services. I've seen people do it really um, uh, aesthetically mm -hmm. uh, as, as well. Like, you know, they, they actually, you'll actually like five columns or yeah, five columns across the footer. Yeah. But it looks really clean. It looks really neat. It's not, yeah. you know, you can have, nice you can like, you know, yeah, like you said, it's uh, uh, five columns wide and maybe yeah. um, six rows tall. And it's right. kind of like every web, every page on your website. And that's yeah. actually really helpful. It's not in the way of your main message. It's really helpful. People are like, I want to get to the, uh, you know, the contact us page or the um, employment page or the, yeah. I do that all the time. I will scroll yeah. down knowing that the footer sometimes, I like it when websites have all that because I'm like, I just want the shortcut to the place I want to go. Exactly. I really like it when websites have that. And that means you're probably a returning user mm -hmm. many times. And that uh, really goes, there's more value there too in the sense of, give your return, returning users a great experience because they're blowing past all of the like stuff about what you do and the services they already know. Right. But if they know that, Hey, I can yeah. get to the page I'm looking for really clean and really clear. It's at, it's at the footer. I know where to look and yeah. it's not one of those websites that I can't find the page I'm looking for. You know, everybody hates that. And then also it's not cluttering up the important stuff right at the top right. of your website in that main menu. It's funny when you think about like a junk drawer, like we have one in our kitchen, right? Sure. Um, and it's, it's usually pretty messy. It's not work. You can have a beautiful junk drawer if you're like a picture yeah. fan, right? You could right. find ways to make it really pretty, but, but like our, the, but, but it's not actually a junk drawer. It's got all the things that we use. Like on yeah. a, we have pens, scissors we use every day, uh, stamps. Like we've got all this car keys. Like we got all the stuff we really need there. And it's there because it's a, it's quick to get to. Right. And it's useful stuff. It's just, right. if it's in any other place, it's, it's clutter. Right. So really, this is just a way to declutter your main menu of your of yeah. your um, of your website, yeah. um, and you'll see more and more like websites that are trending and kind of trendsetters. Mm -hmm. The main menu items that you see at the top of the website might be like three links, maybe right. two, mm -hmm. sometimes one, sometimes one. You know, and that's because they want people to navigate to the important things where they're going to make the sale, mm -hmm. um, and then all the other stuffs like down in the junk drawer. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so good. So that's it. We went from the top of the website to the bottom of the website. And it felt really, I love how clear it feels, which is awesome. And I love, um, I don't know, it's just, it's just, there's something about the clarity of it that I love. And I know this is what you guys do, like with clients, like you've, you've given us examples. I think sometimes people uh, in this do-it-yourself uh, <laughs> uh, day and age we're in, who think they can just look at a YouTube video and do it, I think there's something... Um, a lot of, we get in our own way sometimes trying to do stuff sure. ourselves. And I know that when we work with somebody else like you guys, it just happens, not just easier, but it, it's better. Like the, yeah. the results are better. So if people want to reach out to you and kind of connect with you to, to have you review their website, where can they go? Yeah. So you could go to clarifymymarketing.com. Mm -hmm. uh, we're talking about a website today, but uh, we can help clarify your marketing message in many ways. The past episode, we talked about a one-liner um, in other episodes, we've talked about email campaigns. So more than just a website, yeah. um, your message is out there. I mean, shoot, in it, like I, we said earlier, it's 2019, February 2019, and your message is all over the place, you know? And so yeah. let's make sure that you have clarity wherever your message is, even coming out of your own mouth. So if you haven't listened to uh, the one-liner episode, go back and listen to that. Yeah, I love it. Good stuff, Kurt. Man, it's good yep. stuff. Thank you for Clarify, your time. Clarifyingmymarketing.com. Go check that out and schedule a time to talk to me. Yeah, I love it. Good stuff. All right, Kurt. Thanks for your time today. We'll catch you in the next episode. All right. Thanks, Chris. See ya.